we recently heard that Waymo, the famous Waymo company owned by Google, has ordered and now delivered a new car that is stuffed with LiDAR sensors, of course. And we, also, we have also heard that NVIDIA is now launching its platform, which has a very weird name that I can't remember. So all the OEMs, the other automakers, can start developing autonomous cars with the NVIDIA chipsets. And there's a leak. There's a leak by a senior engineer of NVIDIA that says, well, when we take it to the next level, term to, uh, towards level four autonomy, so which means complete autonomy, we will also add LiDAR sensors, right? And this has been a debate that you probably know very well in the autonomous vehicle crowd and the analysts and observers and investors, of course. All of us that are very excited about that future and that all the cars can drive themselves and completely change human transportation from taxis to ride shares to delivery services to logistics all over the planet to car ownership. You won't need any car anymore, but you will have a giant network of hundreds of millions of robo taxis and robo platforms driving around everywhere, even trucks, even buses. So it is very interesting to see this debate and see the two sides of the debate. One side saying autonomy, autonomous robo cars will always need LiDAR, whereas the other crowd, including Elon Musk and me and many others say that is very stupid. Of course, you don't need LiDAR and radar. You can just use your eyes like humans or in robot terms, you can use cameras because cameras can see the world. We can see the world as humans and we can understand the world and then drive. And your car should do the same thing or not drive. So today I want to take the time to look into this debate on a little bit of a deeper level and understand why this thing, for example, you see all these lighter things on this new robo taxi of uh, Waymo. We see it here, the new Zeker. See, they have all these things installed on this car here on top of the roof. These are all lighters all over the place that try to measure something. Where is the cyber cap, right? When you go to Tesla and understand how Tesla actually does that, here's the cyber cap. It has none of these lighters. It just has little cameras. 10 cameras that suck in the world from the sides, from the back, from the front, normalize it into a singular video stream, and then have, has a brain that sees the stream, identifies all the objects on the road, has a little bit of a memory and understanding of what's happening and recognizes the world and reacts to the world. That is how Tesla does it. And of course, Waymo says we are doing that too and all the LiDAR people, but on top of it, we have LiDAR. So it is a very important debate whether LiDAR is necessary, whether it's not necessary, as Elon says, or number three, the third option, that is what I'm saying, that it's not only not necessary, but it's detrimental for a different reason. So this is today's video, and I tell you it's a very important video because it teaches us something about organizational theory, the theory of progress, and the principles of reality engineering. So this is not a technical video. This is a video that dives deep into the nature of progress, into the nature of organizations, and into the nature of engineering reality with large teams, and how things can make it worse or better. So what is LiDAR? You can think of LiDAR. It's basically a laser that shoots out and basically sees if there is something, okay? I want you to understand this. If you have a car, and the car has cameras and there's a neural net and the camera feed gets normalized into a singular feed and feeds it into the car. It's just images, it's just video, right? And so the car and its computer and maybe the cloud, hopefully not the cloud, but the onboard computer needs to understand all these videos. It needs to see it's like a video, right? A video stream coming in. Maybe there's some 3D if you have multiple cameras, but it's like human eyes. It's like your eyes, right? If you drive, you see, oh, there is a little child. You see some pixels, your brain says, wait, these are not pixels. That's a little child with a ball. Oh, oh, a little child with a ball. I wonder what it's gonna do next. It's gonna throw the ball in front of my driving car and then jumps after the ball to try to die. And then I have to try to not kill it. That's the game. But in order to do that and not kill the little child that tries to get killed, 
you need to understand that there is a little child. Not just that it jumps in front of your car because that might be too late. You have to understand the little child has a ball, stands on the side and might throw the ball in front of your car. So you better be cautious before anything happens. You need to have world understanding. And of course you have that, that's why you can drive. And there are many, of course, infinitely more situations like that. That's the trick. And if you are a simple-minded little engineer, AI engineer, you say, ooh, ooh, that's very hard. Because what if I don't know something? What if there's a kangaroo and I don't recognize it as a child because it's not a child, it's a kangaroo. And I've never seen a kangaroo, but a kangaroo on the side of the road. For you, even if you have never seen a kangaroo, you think like, ooh, there's a thing. It looks like an animal. It's probably going to jump in front of my car. So I better slow down. But the AI engineer, if they're a little lazy, they say, oh, this is too hard. It's an edge case. This is very difficult. We cannot rely on our car to have world understanding. Why can we not rely on our car to have world understanding? Because world understanding is very hard. It requires high levels of artificial intelligence that we don't have yet, that we definitely didn't have 10 years ago, and that we definitely also didn't have three years ago. So what do lazy engineers, and with lazy, I don't mean that they don't get up in the morning or that they don't walk to the grocery store. With lazy, I mean intellectually lazy. I mean like they're sitting there, it's like, eh, we can't do it. There's a car, the car's very dangerous. What could we do to improve safety? That's how they sell it to you. The lazy engineer is gonna say, well, I can't do it. The world understanding doesn't work. So I need a little crutch. I need like a thing that helps me to make the car safer, even though it doesn't understand the world. So how can I give the car something that if this car is retarded, it's a technical expression, retardation. So the car is not where it should be, it's retarded. I have a retarded car. What do I do so the stupid little retarded car doesn't kill anyone? Well, the lazy, intellectually lazy engineer, the intellectually lazy CEO or, you know, leader of some sort says, I mean, it can't understand the world. Why don't we give it a dumb little stick, a laser stick, a different type of sensor that sits on top of the car? And while the car is very dumb and doesn't understand the world, it takes the stick and the stick rotates very quickly and it sticks constantly out. It's like a blind person. Blind people can be very smart. They're not retarded like the Waymo car, but they're blind. They don't see anything. So they take the stick and stick it everywhere all the time. That's what a LiDAR does. That's why it's rotating. It's shooting out the laser. It's rotating very quickly. It also supplemented with radars, with actual radars. And the laser shoots back and the LiDAR measures. Oh, when, it, when does it come back? It's like a stick, right? And it sticks it all around itself and says, well, I don't know what it is, but there is something 10 meters away. There is something five meters away. There is something two meters away. And then it drives a little bit and sees like, oh, now it's only one meter away. Now I'm getting a little scared, right? So the LiDAR is basically sticking around all the time around the car. And if you are intellectually lazy and don't understand how to engineer reality, you're going to say this increases safety. You need LiDARs. That is why on who is intellectually lazy and incompetent a little bit says you need LiDARs. Because they say, we cannot understand the world. Therefore, we give the cars the sticks. They stick it around. They have no idea what happens, but the stick is absolute safety because it tells you, boom, there's a wall. Oh, I was too stupid to see the wall. I was too stupid to understand there is a wall, but my stick is ramming into the wall. It's like, oh, there's, there's something. So they consider that safe. Of course, you can argue all kinds of things. Like, is that really safe if you're driving 100 kilometers an hour or like 60 miles an hour? Like, how much does that actually help if suddenly there's a kid jumping in front of your Waymo? Well, not much, but still, if you're very stupid and don't have world understanding, the idea that you can drive around without the stick constantly sticking out seems like complete madness because you know how crappy and dumb your brain is, your artificial brain. So all the engineers at Waymo or at Cruise and all these other little companies, they say people without LiDAR are nuts. You cannot have these multi-ton metal things on the road driving around without a driver, not understanding anything without sticking the stick everywhere all the time. So just in case they don't understand something, they have the stick, right? Now comes Elon. And Elon says, you know what? From a first principle perspective, the stick business makes no sense. Number one, humans don't have the stick. We don't need the stick. 
if you have eyes, you use your eyes and your eyes are like, wait a moment, there is a kid. You don't need to go to the kid. Take a stick and stick it into the kid. And say, oops, there is something. I don't know what it is. I don't understand, but my stick doesn't stick there. So maybe I'm more cautious. No, that's not how you go to driving school, right? You're not going to driving school. And every time you see a car or a kid or something, you have to get out of the car and stick a stick in it. It's like, oops, there's something. No, you couldn't drive a car like that. You would say like, dude, this is very bad. So that is what Elon was thinking. He was like, this makes absolutely no sense. And then Elon was also thinking something else. He was thinking, if I don't understand the world, if my car doesn't understand the world, literally understand the world, it's not a full self-driving car. There is no path to full self-driving if you do not understand the world. That is called intellectually non-lazy. That's called first principle thinking. That's called understanding on a fundamental level what is necessary to succeed. And that has nothing to do with what people believe is possible. It has something to do with theoretic thinking. We need to understand the world as cars. Otherwise, we shouldn't drive around in the world. That's the end of the story. Whereas the other guy said, no, we could map out each street, put the little sticks everywhere, then have a remote operator, and then our thing works like a Frankenstein that was never alive, but at least from the outside, it looked like it. Yes, Waymo, but you can't scale it. It doesn't make any sense. So that is the fundamental problem and debate here. And that is the fundamentally different approach. Now let's get into why LIDAR is so bad, why it's actually a fallacy of the first degree to approach this with a LIDAR paradigm and why it's not just dumb, but it's actually training the entire organization to fail. If you allow your engineers to do a cheap little trick like LIDAR, that is number one, never gonna scale. Number two, still gonna overlook a lot of problems. And number three, it's like a crutch that tries to compensate or conceal your lack of intelligence. And I'm talking about the AI systems. Elon's approach is if we don't understand the world completely, if we don't see the world and understand it as computers, as robot taxis, as cyber caps, if we cannot see a video feed and fully comprehend everything that's going on in this feed that is of any importance to a driver, we are not ready. This system cannot be deployed as an FSD system in commercial robot taxi operations. He's completely right. There's no argument here. It needs to be completely ready. But if you create a crutch like this for your organization, then the organization becomes unfocused. It's like the Vikings that burned their ships. It's the opposite from burning the, chip, the ships. If you're the Vikings and you land somewhere and you still have your ships, you know the paradigm, right? You still have your ships and there are lots of soldiers, enemy soldiers. And you think like some knights walking around like in the Middle Ages, some peasants with like for, uh, stick forks, what are they called, these forks? Then you think like, oh, I'm a Viking, I'm very brave, but maybe today is not the right day. And then you jump on your ship and you don't do the job. But if you burn the ships, it is very clear what you have to do. And that increases your chances dramatically of succeeding because the mission is crystal clear. And LiDAR is basically giving these engineers a bunch of elevators where they can just press a button and say, today is not the right day to fight. We just use some more cheap LiDAR to prevent us from understanding that we don't understand anything. And, you know, if our systems suck, well, it doesn't matter. We have LiDAR. So creating organizations like that, that are not completely focused on the first principle that is there to be solved, is very bad because it turns the entire organization into a lazy organization that relies on a crutch that can never scale and that will always prevent you from doing your actual job as an engineer. And your actual job is to create world understanding in these cars. Whereas with Tesla, not only did Elon say, no, no, no crutches, you guys have to solve the problem. I don't care how, solve the problem. Make these things understand the video feed because that is the holy grail. That is the only way it can work for anyone. And while you are not ready, you should know you are not ready and not get distracted by stupid LIDARs that just are there to conceal your failure. LIDAR conceals the failure of AI engineers and concealing failure amplifies failure. It's a failure enabling mechanism. 
That is exactly what LiDAR is, at least in the context of self-driving cars. In the context of reality engineering and unlocking this amazing ability of neural nets to see and understand the world so they can react and drive. In the middle of that mission stands a stupid LiDAR that allows you to continuously fail with an excuse. Elon removed that excuse and therefore created the team, the one team in the world that is laser focused on getting the actual job done. That is the strength of Tesla. And that is why LiDAR is not just stupid, but also a structural problem for an organization. As long as you have LiDAR, you're basically having an excuse for failure, which makes you more likely to fail. So LiDAR prevents neural nets and their development organizations to create world understanding. It's purely negative on the one true metric. And that one true metric is, does your AI team generate world understanding per dollar invested or world understanding per time invested on your development trajectory? If you take a team and you say, here's a billion dollars, you have one year, one team has LIDARs and the other team only has neural nets and vision. You can be absolutely 1 million percent guaranteed that the team without LIDAR will make more progress in understanding the world than the team with LIDAR because LIDAR is not just a sensor that increases world understanding. It does the opposite. It prevents you from dealing with the sensors that could get you world understanding, which are the cameras, by giving you also a stick and say, just in case you're too dumb, use the stick to double check if something is there being run over by your stupid car. That's exactly what LIDAR is. And that is why it creates failure. We have to understand that. And then we understand why Waymo was always toast from the outset, because the organizational design is optimized for complete failure, way more failure. I hope that was interesting. Sometimes we have to think about the principles of innovation, the principles of reality engineering, and we have to understand what actually needs to be achieved, what are crutches and what are obstacles to achieving that in terms of time and dollars spent and progress made. Great strength of Tesla great strength of Elon to have a clear vision of these pathways and focusing the organizations absolutely around that goal. I hope that was helpful. Subscribe, like, and see you very soon.